Ain't no Texas. Ain't no smoochies. Oh my God, welcome to another episode of Smoochie Town. Sorry for the voice, guys. I ate a lot of ass this weekend. So, before we get to our very handsome and funny guest from the Bay Area, it's the Smooch of the Week. And guess what? Not another date again. It's a story about how my mom likes to get me weird gifts for Christmas, okay? So she likes to do this thing where she goes to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, beeline it for the checkout aisle, and buy all the things that normal shoppers would never buy. You know, like the five pack of off-brand Burt's and Bees, the Furby portable speaker, you know, the mini gumball machine. She went all out this year. She bought me a variety pack of popcorn seasoning. And her pitch for the gift was that when I have a lady friend over, put on a movie, make some popcorn, I can impress her with the flavor variety. Mom, very sweet of you, but I live in LA. If you wanna be impress these girls over my place, just give me some fucking cocaine and that's the smooch of the week. <laughs> my guest today, currently living in New York, one of the funniest guys. I saw him on social media first and then I met him at Trevor Wallace's birthday party. Shout out Trevor. Very funny comedian. Give it up for Joey Avery. Oh, thank you. I thought this was going to be such a wholesome smooch of the week and then you ended it with buy me Coke, mom. <laughs> So I guess we had a hard, oh, hard pivot God. there at the end, but strong. Did your mom ever get you any weird gifts? No, not really. Yeah? Yeah, no, she's very, her gifting. Oh, she's a good listener. She, she well, doesn't... her gifting strategy is you provide me directly a list of the things that you want with links and sizes oh. so that she gets the right gift, but uh, I have done the late Efficient. Work. It is efficient. It is very efficient. efficient. Yes. How's living in New York? So it's, you recently moved there, right? With your wife? Correct. Yeah. And uh, how old are you? Uh, 33. I thought you were 22. Uh, I mean, you know. Look how old, he looks like a baby. He I'll looks take like baby. that. I'll take that shit. He, he, he definitely looks younger than me. I do moisturize, you know, skincare routine on I, point. I do too, but I look and sound 45. That is true. You sound a little beat up today. Dude. Really? Dude, it was Oscars weekend. What do you want me to do? Even though I slept through the fucking event last night. And Did totally, you? Totally blew a girl off and unintentional. I've been talking to this girl. I invited her to this red carpet thing and to meet like my very good friend at Beverly Hills Hotel for a drink. Uh -huh. She went to buy a dress and everything that day. Marco wants to not sleep Saturday night and then go straight to the Abbey for some fun with a girlfriend. And then uh, I went back home and I fell asleep till like 9 p.m. and I missed the party. She bought a dress and everything. That's fucked up. <laughs> Uh, you offered her like a beautiful LA experience yeah. and then just took it away. I, but it's, I didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't like I purposely wasn't answering. But if you know you have a large Oscars event, you can't just not sleep the night before. Listen, I... Sounds like mom did buy you that cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's the current... I'm in the doghouse on that one. Yeah, is she like super pissed? She probably she like got ready, right? Oh yeah, makeup. She was debating on blocking me and then I called her and I like pled with her. I was like, please don't. It's not my fault. That's tough. What was the event? Like, it was uh, like a it was red just a carpet? post Oscars party, like red wow. carpet thing. Dude, that would have been sick. I know. <laughs> Damn, that's sucks. Kind of got cool photos on the carpet. Not for about me. How's yeah. New York? I, I, well, I fell asleep during the Oscars too, but it oh. was different. Oh. I was just visiting my friend and then we went and saw his parents and we were like drinking whiskeys and then like yeah. halfway through the Oscars, I just fell asleep. Yeah. That's how you do it in your 30s. Okay. You just have a few drinks and fall asleep anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got to start doing, just maybe capping it at like two or three rather yeah, than 17. Yeah, well, you can't not sleep and then have a normal day. Like you would have been a lunatic. If you had gone to that, you would have been insane. I hold this together. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, it's fun. I like having fun. You know, sometimes you take the restrictor plate off. You want to yeah. let the red dragon eat, but yeah. you know, <laughs> sometimes it's tough. Yeah. New York's probably a big party city, I would assume. It is. It's a city that never sleeps, just yeah. like you, yeah. uh, until Oscars night. Yeah. Um, no, New York's really fun. Uh, I haven't been partying insanely hard out there, more just like doing the stand-up stuff, yeah. but it's fun. 
Yeah. Uh, but you and your wife, you live uh, Lower East Side. Is mm-hmm. that like a cool area to like walk around and like, is it like, yeah, no. Apparently to LA, what's different? Obviously the weather, but everything is that like, f- first of all, the fact that you can walk around a neighborhood is oh, unique. True, yeah. In LA, it's yeah. like you always, you're 40 minutes in a car away from everything. New York, you can just. There isn't like if there's a something happening in the city, I'm never like, oh, I'm not gonna go because of where it is. Oh, in LA, it's like very. I'm not going to the West Side. I don't care. It's insane. I love the West Side, but when I lived over here, I was just like, what do I need a plane ticket? Yeah, exactly. How am I supposed to get there? It's literally 16 miles, but it takes an hour. It's tough, like, and you if you're drinking, you need to be Ubering. Now yeah. it's now it's 80 dollars, and yeah. you know you talk about falling asleep. I fall asleep in the car. <laughs> now I wake up, I'm disoriented. I don't know what's happening. You That's know? hilarious. Yeah. And you host your own podcast, Pure 69, right? It, I used to do that one. Now I have my own podcast called The Joey Show. The Pure Joey? 69 I did with three other comics that are out here. But when I moved to New York, I started my own. You wouldn't want to do the Zoom thing. It doesn't work. I don't like it. It doesn't work. I won't watch it. Yeah. it's yeah. I'm, what am I, sitting in on a fucking meeting? Yeah. I feel like am I'm I at work. Am I applying for a job? Yeah. No, it sucks. So I do, I do my own. I have a guest come in person and then I like... I've tried to make it like a multi meet. I mean, I made it way harder than I had to, but I'm like, I'll do like an episode with an interview and then I'll add like a music video or like a sketch and try oh, to make it like cool. a, show. a show. Yeah. That's but funny. then all of a sudden you're trying to do it every week and I'm like, oh shit, I yeah. need a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only like three episodes, four episodes in. Because I, I first discovered you just through like social media, watching your clips and your crowd work is like insane. Thank like you. In fucking saying, is that your bread and butter? Would you say? You know, it's funny because that's what people see because that's what I can post every week. So yeah. people just assume that's like what it is. But when I'm headlining, I'm doing an hour, and it's probably at least 45, 40 minutes or material. Mm. You know, so most of it's material, but there's just crowd work in there, and I love doing it. Yeah. You know, like I wouldn't want the whole show to be that. You want the show to have an actual like effort put in in advance no for sure but uh the crowd work clips is the best way to be able to post every week and mm. still give, give myself time to work on the jokes do you uh drink or anything before your sets mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I sh- <laughs> yeah i sh- i shouldn't uh yeah. i do sometimes but yeah. i don't i sometimes I'll, I'll do it totally sober i like to do it a couple drinks in but over the course of my career i've done it at a variety of levels of drunk <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to, I do more crowd work when I'm high because I want to like learn about someone and like. <laughs> yeah, you're like, this is for me. What's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Do you uh, like smoking weed before going up? I do now. I was always afraid to, but now it's like I'm more relaxed. That's I'm, already, I'm a high energy person. Yeah. So it kind of like brings me back to like, oh, that's tolerable. That makes energy. sense. I never do that because I'm just worried I'll get too in my head. You know, with like a couple drinks, you're just like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. But, um, I like smoking, but I'm a weed after everything is done guy. Oh, not productive stoner. No, like I'm sure I could be, but I think it's just better this way. (laughs) That it's like, all right, I'm done. Yeah, you know, I can have an existential crisis in peace. So, what was your what would your vice be? Drinking, drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like getting fucked up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's your drinking choice? Whiskey. Uh. Tequila, probably, okay. but I can do, you know, if, if it's, if it's that time, like I'm a garbage can, I can do any of it. Dude, after I'll start the evening with a couple skinny marks cause I'm yeah. watching the figure and then whatever is, has alcohol percentage is going into my body. Yeah. No, it's crazy. The amount of stuff that I do that I'm like, this is healthy. Like yeah. I'll be getting a coffee and I'm like, no sweetener. All right. No dairy, you know, <laughs> yeah. like a little bit of oat milk. Yeah. And then I drink like 14 drinks and order McDonald's. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just exactly. like, especially when you know, leg going back to the coke thing the girls will be like a vegan and gluten-free and this and that and then like we'll literally rail lines on the weekend like mm-hmm, cocaine and kale <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it keeps you slim yeah that's yeah. for sure but now they have ozempic and stuff which is cool how'd you meet your wife uh college oh wow so i've college. never been on a date fuck you like i've obviously like gone out to dinner with women you know what i mean but like i've never like all my dating was high school and college, which is like going to a party and like standing in a corner and being like, eh. yeah. and then like no taking way. someone home. So I've never like met someone and been like, we should meet for drinks or like never had that. Jealous. I don't know. It sounds kind of fun. What I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the grass is always greener. I'm not saying I want to do it. I'm just yeah, like, then does... I'm laying there by myself masturbating when you have a fucking beautiful wife. Laying That's true. But I do the road. <laughs> you think I don't lay down and masturbate, dude? <laughs> it's fucking just Catch me at the fucking Holiday Inn. I'm, I'm gripping up. Do you, do, you, <laughs> <laughs> do you secretly do it, or does your wife know? 
Uh, I don't, it's not, uh, she knows that it happens, but I'm not just like, you'll never guess what I just did. <laughs> Prepare an extra load of laundry. Uh, no, it's not discussed. I don't think that, I don't think it's a very becoming picture of a man to discuss his yeah. personal ejaculations, even though I do it for a living. But like, yeah. I'm not going to like, there's no alert system. Yeah. The girls, I feel like seeing you do it, in my experience. Really? They like seeing you pleasure, like... Like, well, Louis you C.K. Wanna, thought that too. <laughs> wouldn't you want to see like uh, a girl like pleasure herself? Your wife like? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I would. I would watch a woman do about anything naked. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know if that's reciprocal. Or not. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. What's your favorite porn category? Do you watch porn? Uh, I try not to, but I will. But I'm like, you know, I. It could be anything. I, I, amateur's nice. I like to feel real. Dude, that's what fucking uh, Jay said. Uh, fucking Jay Washington. He was oh, like, really? yeah, I want it to be like security cam footage. Like, I want. <laughs> well, that's a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah. no, not spying. Yeah. Like, the quality. Like, I, I want can, it to be like me because I don't know what I'm doing either. Totally. Yeah. And I haven't gone so far down the <laughs> rabbit hole. I could do, I could get a, a picture, it could still work. Dude, you yeah. know what I mean? I got some videos of me and my ex's pictures and stuff. What? Go through the highlight reel. <laughs> what did you say? I got like videos of me and my ex's and stuff. Oh, they, they oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The but, personal collection. Oh, yeah, that yeah. shit. You don't have any exes, but like, you, yeah. Not really, but I, you know, I, I, I've not only had sex with one person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. There you go. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite sex position? I mean, it's boring. I feel like you get shit for this, but missionary slaps, dude. It always Love to does. Just, you know, Good look, eye look so, Yes, look someone in the eye and just... You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it, it's, it's about... The whole thing with sex is you're going for connection, I think, a lot of the time, right? Exactly. That's the best way to do it. Now, that said, if you have had a... Many experiences as as, as you've had. I'm sure there. Are. I'm sure there are a lot of times where you're like, the last thing I would want to do is look this pig in the eyes. <laughs> That's you talking, by the way, not me. I'm just <laughs> no, it's like after you nut, it's like post nut clarity. Some, is true. Yeah, sometimes you're like I. Me and this person have agreed, I would imagine, that we are down to have sex with each other, but I don't think we like each other very much. Yeah. But then, like, once they don't want you anymore, it's like, you want them I anymore. love you now. Yeah. yeah. I need you. I need you. And yeah. let's have kids. Yeah. Have you gotten serious with anyone? I try to, but then I get the ick. Right. Something comes across. Either, like, she smells one time, and it's like, whoa. That I'll is I'll never tough. get that smell out of my head. Yeah. Smell is the strongest scent tied to memory, according it to is. the Old Spice commercial that I saw, like, years ago. <laughs> and it is true. Like, if, yeah. if I smell something, I'll, I'll remember like, that. Even bad perfume. Like, there was one Probably, time I took yeah. a chick to John and Vinny's. You remember John, you know John and Vinny's? No. Oh, great Italian joint. Yeah. By the way, are you Italian or no? Because no, remind me, like, everyone probably guesses you're Italian for some reason, right? Joe, name's Joey, and you're I like have your persona. vibes. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm like, most, you know, 23 and Me is a fucking melting pot of whiteness, but yeah. uh, it's like mainly like British. Oh, okay. Like English, like, my name's Joseph William Avery. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking yeah. diplomats. Yeah. You're a di British diplomat. I'm a diplomat. I think I could do that. Yeah. You got your uh, comedy start in Cape Town, though, right? Correct, yeah. Wow. I, uh, I got to, I was lucky enough to study abroad, so I did a, a semester at University of Cape Town when I was, I went to UC San Diego, but yeah, I was in, uh, in Cape Town for like six months, yeah. and it was kind of like trying everything because I was like looking for a new identity because I thought I was going to be a baseball player that didn't work out not exactly tall uh, <laughs> and so I tried a bunch of stuff I had like a radio show and then I did stand up oh, really? I did that once and I was like that's wait funny. you met your girlfriend in college you said right you is your girlfriend South African no no because they're beautiful they're yeah they're hot I never been but like I matched on Raya with some yeah yeah no they're hot they're hot yeah yeah it's great. And the accent and everything. So, but you got your start there, just a show, and then you came back mm -hmm. here and was like, this is what I want to do? Yeah, yeah. Did it in San Diego for a little bit and then went back up to the Bay Area and like came up through the San Francisco scene and mm. then was here for a little bit. And, then and, and describing that is just a lot of open mics. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, it's scene? like every every comedian, it's, it's such a menagerie of shitty shows <laughs> yeah. coming up. I mean, it's like one of the famous places, it's closed now, but... Famous place in the San Francisco scene is this place Brainwash, and it was a cafe slash laundromat. And so you'd literally be on stage, and like a crackhead would come wandering out of the laundry room and be like, "Give me a nickel!" And you'd be like, "Oh my god!" So that probably helped me with like learning how to do crowd work and shit. Because yeah. 
I'd be trying some stupid, like, verbose bullshit about how I'm like, dude, you know, fucking God, and, like, we're all connected, and, like, none of it's funny, but I'm, like, trying to philosophize, and yeah. the crackhead's like, eat my shit! And I'm like, all right, I need to, like, make this grounded in humor again. Someone's doing her whites over there. Yeah, fucking, exactly. Yeah. yeah, or whatever you're into, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Very domesticated show with the laundromat. Yeah, but yeah, a bunch of open mics and local shows, bar shows, and all that shit, and then, you know. Yeah, what's your um, worst heckling experience? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I have... Besides eat my shit. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the that, that was, yeah, that stuff definitely happened. Yeah, there, there's just been a few, like, a, a really drunk, like, I was doing a show at this, like, Italian restaurant, so I'm just, like, standing in the bar doing a show, and I had a joke that references Jimi Hendrix. It wasn't even like mean to him. And this old drunk at the bar was like, you don't know the first fucking thing about Hendrix. And I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, dude. I'm not even being mean. And then he literally like tried to fight me. Oh. Actually, that wasn't even the worst one. The worst one ever was uh, New York during COVID. A homeless guy actually charged the stage, but the stage was in a park. So I was outside in a park and this dude charged me and I had to like drop the mic and run off stage. And like a wall no of like way. New Yorkers like away? formed. Yeah, dude. First of all, you can't touch them. You might become one. It's like a zombie. It's contagious. <laughs> yeah. Homeless is contagious. Yeah. Houselessness is contagiousness. <laughs> so yeah, no, I was like, I was like, oh fuck this. I'm hiding. All these like New Yorkers formed a wall around me. And then this like Puerto Rican chick just like was the one who got him to go away. She was just like, fuck you, you don't know fucking shit. Get the fuck out of here. No one wants you here. <laughs> and he was like crazy. And he's like, I'm from the Bronx. And she's like, you ain't from the fucking Bronx. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm so out of place. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Puerto Ricans, they tend to be spicy. And the worst part is there was a camera there. I got off and I'm like, oh, y'all get that? And they're like, oh no. I'm like, how did you not turn it on? I would have been famous five years fucking earlier. Yeah, dude. <laughs> exactly. Those fucking mishaps literally launched careers. I, I found that I posted the audio and I I did like a video oh, of really? me in my hotel, like you discussing. You did a incident. funny animated, like yeah, like reenactment of it. I yeah, know, that's a lot of work. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with all of this. Is it's like good idea for a piece of content, and I'm like, Ugh, what am I gonna do all that? Yeah, right. Sounds mm. tough. Sounds how'd awesome. you find your comedy crew? Like, cause you open for like Waltz and Schultz and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how did you kind of like? get in with that and like really launch your career into like a full-time stand-up yeah it was getting in with those guys was just you know coming up through a local scene you just like work the long process to get in at all the clubs like in san francisco the punchline and Cobbs and the sacramento punchline are all run by live nation mm -hmm. and so to to get able to be able to host at the punchline you have to go almost every sunday for a year and not even perform and then they start throwing you up every once in a while and then they give you really? it's like a multi-year process but i worked all the local clubs and so i've gotten to meet a lot of people just through like hosting with them for a weekend and making that connection so schultz i met at this club rooster tea feathers in sunnyvale which is next to like a tire store rtfs yeah rtfs dude and uh and yeah we just we just became friends through that and then like I opened for him in Sacramento and San Francisco and, and just kind of kept the relationship alive and then Trevor I saw was going to Cobbs and I at the time worked for this clothing brand Chubbies Chubbies yeah, yeah, yeah. and we did a podcast and so I was able to use the Chubbies account to DM Trevor and was like yo would you come in and do the podcast and we'll give you a bunch of free stuff and he came in we made the connection and then I ended up opening for him that night and then he was like, fuck it, you want to come to Chico tomorrow and do like a theater show? And so I was literally just met him once and then Let's kind of go, friends. Bro. Yeah. And then we met at his birthday yeah. party. We met at his birthday. Awesome. That's how we met at uh, Trevor's birthday party, which was insane. Yeah, that was the most that was like... The, that was the most... That was probably one of the coolest birthday parties. Like it was star the studded, just single most LA thing I've done in my entire life. Yeah, uh, you're up in the fucking what was Be Bel Air, yeah, giving Bel -Air. IV therapy shots. Fucking while I'm drinking a beer, I'm getting like a hangover. They're shot. handing out shrooms. Yeah, I love shrooms. Do you like shrooms? I do. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same thing with weed. I have to be like careful. Like I can't overdo it because I can't be having a existential crisis and also being fun at a party yeah it's i like being microdose well you can macro dose too in like joshua tree or something yeah like that. i bet like god taking a shot <laughs> i'm aware of his presence 
or have, her. Having a chocolate or, or her. Yeah. <laughs> have, or they. It's an interdimensional uh, being. It's really not gendered. I think we understand that by now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, LGBTQG. That's right. Yeah. God's, God's, God's the, the initial they, them, dude. Yeah. Because it's all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, wait, so do you, your vice is shrooms. Have you heard of Magic Mind? Mm-mm. It's like a shot. And then uh, it has like doesn't have psilocybin, but it does have like nootropics, lines, main and stuff. And I used to be prescribed Adderall, and I stopped taking it because of the magic mind, because it's like oh, a steady shit. state full of energy. It's like the microdose. You do have ADD vibes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah oh my yeah, god. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. This podcast. That's what it should be called. Because I started asking you something, and I'm like, time out. What Hold you, up. What? What's your favorite sex decision? Uh, <laughs> I feel like ADD can be like a superpower too. Like it's like distracting, but I know a lot of people who have it, and Listen, they're the most like I don't know. efficient at getting certain things done. If I had to choose between super strength, invisibility, and ADD, <laughs> I think I'm going with invisibility. Yeah. Well, okay, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it would be the weirdest superhero, you know. Yeah. Oh, here comes AD <laughs> in the world, but he couldn't get it done on time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he starts every job but doesn't finish <laughs> it. So when you take Adderall, does it hype you up or does it calm you down? Definitely hypes me up. But oh, okay. it makes me. Like, I've heard some people who have it more. like. Yeah. yeah, it just makes me focus more because my brain is scattered and I like to smoke weed. Right. Well, yeah, weed that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, that could be part of it. Yeah, the weed's probably the underlying issue here is when... Like, yeah. Because I am funnier on weed. On weed. Uh, but I'm also more spacey. Right, right. Yeah, and it's tough to like get things done. Yeah. Like if you're like booking travel, you're not going to do a good job. No, like I hate like packing on when you're high. Right. I'm forgetting. You're everything. thinking about like all the stuff that could happen in this one shirt. And then you're yeah. like, that was 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that was 20 minutes and I missed my flight. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I packed a lot of sunglasses and forgot all of my underwear. Yeah, I like. I Details like, are a yeah, problem. Grocery stores. I like. So you just like going, getting high, but then because you're high, taking Adderall and then that's the combo. Or I guess you don't need it anymore. I don't need that or that, that, that magic mind stuff, but no, I usually, yeah, like I just not do either, maybe. Yeah, that's also possible. Sobriety is its own drug, and it's yeah, a good one. it is. But, but I, I just like, there's a line for like people that are sober, not that I'm judging them for being sober or whatnot, right. but I hate the people that are sober and they make sure to tell you it. They go out of their way and be like, no, I don't drink. Yeah. Like it's like, okay, that's cool. You can be proud of it, but like, don't ruin my time and judge me. I agree. It's tough, but like, if I've been so, if I'm like taking three days off of drinking, I'm already annoying about it. Cause like, if someone will like offer me a drink and I'll be like, just you know, I am a cool guy, <laughs> but I can't have this right now and I apologize and I feel bad and honestly, I'll just have the drink. <laughs> like, yeah. I just you, like, end up, you end up drinking it. It's so hard to be sober when also you really want to be a cool guy. Yeah. You know, what sucks. I mean? yeah, it's hard. Yeah, but then it's like you, if you drink too much, then you know that's not great for your health because I can't be product, productive when I'm hungover, unfortunately. Yeah, right. people like power through and stuff. Maybe when I was younger, not even when I was younger, uh, just like working out, yeah, can't do it. No, I, can, I can't physically, but like mentally, I'm not going to. No, it's horrible. Yeah. Working out hungover is horrific. Horrific. I went for a run yesterday and had drank a lot the night before, and like the whole time, I was just like, when can this end? Yeah, well, and it could end at any time you wanted. I, well, yeah, but I'm not a fucking pussy. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you go for like for a run, you're like, I feel my body, I feel athletic. I felt like I was driving a fucking oil tanker, dude. I yeah. was like, you're fat. You and suck. like, it's tough. Ironically enough, it's tougher to sweat, and when you do, it smells like the alcohol. Yeah. And it's like, uh, ewy. It's tough. And then that's the strongest, you know, scent is the strongest scent. So like going back. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Is, yeah. According to fucking Old Spice. Yeah. No Old Spice How often do you that. work out, though? I feel like you work out a lot. I try to work out at least four or five times a week. Yeah. I'm also on testosterone. Uh, really? TRT, yeah. At 28? Yeah, man, I've, been on it for two, I've been on it for two years. Is I that just so you can I'm be shrout? Low T natu naturally, but yeah. Oh, So really? I can just be like fucking absolutely peeled. Really? Yeah. And but you dude, have it helps my brain. Naturally? It helps me. Yeah. yeah. And like I think because I took testosterone in high school, I played football. Oh, so and you I think already, it affected you me. You started the T game. Yeah, so I started. In a You're young like age. a fucking science experiment, dude. Oh uh, yeah. You got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> Do you? Are you worried that you're gonna have a gigantic head? What? Well, like, you know what I mean. Like a lot of testosterone guys I feel like actually this head, is a, wait ahead of my penis or no no the head like this thing yeah like a big is that like, a side effect is I think it is I, I mean, heard of the, I heard of the small testicles dude I feel like the world is run 
now by mostly bald dudes who are on testosterone and have a giant head. So like if you think about like The Rock, if you think about <laughs> Joe Rogan, if you think about Dana White, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, bro, you're right. What do they have in common? Big old cabeza, shiny as fuck, <laughs> rich, testosterone out, bigger biceps than any fucking 25 year old you know. It's true. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna do it. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm trying to wait so that I don't get a giant head. But uh, your head looks fine. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I think I am losing. Good. I'm getting the peninsula. And is that from it's it's gene genetics? My okay, because it could be. You might, dude. This guy's gonna run the world. <laughs> You're gonna be one of them, dude. Once you join their Illuminati. Once I stop doing every drug yeah, ever. Yeah, they're like capitalist monks. You yeah. know. That's what they <laughs> Let's go back to your wife. Let's go okay, back to your wife. Okay, yeah. uh, what would you say? Like, made you turn in your smoochie card and like want to settle down with her? Um. You know, I think it was one of those things where I never wanted to turn it in because we met when I was so young. You know, we met when I was 20. Do you your virginity to it? No, no, no. Come on, dog. <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fucking Just don't give me a Mormon. drink. Uh, I, no, no, I've had sex um, with, with a variety of people, uh, women. Um, oh, God, yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh. Fine, you know. Joey Avery comes out you can on have Smoochie a, Town. You can have a dick and be a woman. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they like just him. don't know. Yeah, That's Joey. Actually funny. I'm not gay. That dude just doesn't know he's a woman yeah. yet. <laughs> I took the dick out of my mouth. And I took the dick out of my mouth. I was starting to think you're gay. Yeah. Hey, pro tip don't have the third biggest cock in the threesome. Oh, that's tough. That's a toughie. Yeah, you, yeah you'd hate to be that low yeah. man on the totem did you, pole. Wait, did you say. Dude, I'm not gay. He just doesn't know he's a woman yet. <laughs> yeah. So write that's that down. Smart. That's smart. That's yeah, that's next level right. progressive, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I didn't want to. I, I, for the longest time, and we've, we've discussed this openly, like, I was like, I, you know, I would love to keep fucking random people. I would like to do that a lot. However, I don't think that that works, and our relationship is so good that I it's not more important to me to do that. Mm. And so I think the way it worked is we just, like, have been like flexible not in terms of that stuff but just like our like our lives like i said we we've we've lived separately like she supports everything that i do in my career it's you never live together we do now okay. in new york but when i was in la she was still in san francisco for work and oh. like we've never tried to control each other and then the thing that always made it work was just being like well I really do love this person and we have a special thing. And even though I want to do all this other stuff, it's just not more important to me than, you know, yeah. keeping this. Do you think like the sacrifice though of being in a relationship, well, it was different because long distance and you kind of could have did your own thing, mm -hmm. but, like going to an event and stuff when she just wants you to like stay home and watch a movie. Like how do you, ba how would you balance that? And like what sacrifice for your career because you're always on the road and whatnot? Totally. I think that the th one of the things that really works is like, because we met before I ever did stand up, she has been along for the whole ride so she knows like and she's like listen to like comedy podcasts and so she knows how it works <laughs> like she knows it's like open mic days to local shows to all this shit and uh and she's never made me sacrifice anything for the career and the the hope is that like that pays off it'll help both of us but she knows that trying to like control me or not letting me go after that would be damaging yeah. for who I am and if you really like the person you're with you don't want them to not be you know the fullest expression of themselves exactly you know uh, what would you say is the most creative spot you've had sex uh see when it's your wife I don't know if you want <laughs> that's fair. yeah that's fair um Top floor to library at our college. Hey, <laughs> it's a hell of a library. I like it. I like it. it up. So you're mar <laughs> so you're married and you don't get the ick with girls and dating. But what's an ick you have in life? You know, mm. I'm sure now like your wife does some stuff uh, that's like icky, but you love her regardless. But like if you want to date, no, I was gonna say my uh, my boys growing up and not being down to hang. <laughs> I'm at the age now where it's like you'll, you you invite your same friends out to like do stuff and like we're all growing up and, and stuff's more important now and, and you're just like, what do you mean you're not gonna be there Saturday? We're getting drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a bummer, dude. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, but, then, but then stuff, your life starts to complexify and then you start doing it and then you're like, oh, I get it, mm. you know? But it sucks. And I, I have on more than one occasion like, been hammered and one of my friends is like leaving a party at like 11 and I'm just like, you fucking changed. <laughs> 
you're a pussy, dude. And he's like, my wife is nine months pregnant. And I'm like, fucking so you can't drink? Yeah. You know? <laughs> And that is and I, that is on me. Yeah, you know I need to fix that. Uh, that's probably but, I'm working on. Yeah, that's and, what I'm working on. But I don't want my you know I, I like having everyone together. Yeah. I want the team to stay. You yeah. know what's your uh, sign? Uh, Capricorn. Oh. I don't really know what any of that I no means. I don't even I'm know why. Intelligent person, but there's, there's uh, no follow up questions. Do you I've have to now, as a guy who fucks a lot in L.A.? Do you have to know about <laughs> Thank you. this stuff? Thank you for that. Right? Uh, I mean, there's very, no way you very can't. true compliment. Yes. Well, of course. Yeah. Uh, I can smell the pussy wafting <laughs> off your dick. <laughs> I showered. Okay, I can say that on here. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. You can say a lot of stuff on here. <laughs> Felt a, like Bro, a I lot. Did Felt pod. like a lot when I said it, to be honest. <laughs> I had Nicky Paris on. I love him. And uh, I, he's from a Staten Island, actually. He's a comedian. And he is gay. And uh-huh. I did poppers on air on the fucking, like it was live, like yeah. on the podcast. And you would ask me random fire, like dating question. I was just standing here. I was like, just vibe. Yes. Yeah, poppers are kind of fun. Poppers are great. I used to, yeah. I, the first time they were offered to me was in South Africa. We were at like a thing, and a guy came up to me on the dance floor, and he was like, "Do you want this?" And I was like, "Fucking sweet." And then I like turned to my friend, and she's like, "Y'all, yo, he's trying to fuck you." <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> "Now answer. he's really nice." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my asshole is loosened. Yeah, it, but no, I just like it's just kind of a quick little, quick, quick little. little high, I don't know you where know? I am. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, whoa. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. So I did that. Um, I don't know where I was getting. See? ADD. <laughs> and then he fucked me in the ass. ADD. Yeah. Why is it so much more popular than the gay community? I know it loosens the lo- up the butt, but I think everyone it, could use a loose butt. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know? Do you like ass play? Uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, been there, but yeah, it's not a restaurant I visit frequently. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Very cool. It's like your hometown restaurant. Whenever, yeah, dude, yeah. You go home. You have to go Every there. once in a while. Yeah, yeah you want to go, and it's always great. It's, it's always it's great. Lovely. Yeah, but you're yeah. like, I can't have that for every meal. I'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Uh, no, nah, I like a good little finger. Just right. Can't go past the nail bed. Yeah. 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 yeah classy. Yeah, a little fun. Yeah. Not shoving a cucumber up there. No. No. But I have been there. Um, you so, have? No. No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how was the Comedy Central show? Was it the? It was called Featuring, right? Yes. Yeah. How was that? And how'd you get that? And that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. I. Um, yeah, I think it was. It was like coming off of COVID. I just got a call. I was like, still, I think, living at home with my parents. I don't think I'd moved down here yet. Maybe I had. I think I just moved down here, but I was at home at my parents' house and I just got a call out of the blue. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's Ryan from Comedy Central. I'm like, fucking what, dude? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you we want to. just did have- a popper and you're like, Fuck. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, this is like what you dream about, you know? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we want to have you on our digital series. It's like a 10 minute stand up set. And I was like, awesome I'll do that like you know careers taken off and then I was like oh yeah that you know doesn't necessarily launch you to completion at this point yeah. but it was really really cool um, and uh, yeah I think they just saw one of my clips I didn't have any representation I didn't have anything I was not really in the LA scene I think they just saw my clips and were like let's offer this guy let's uh, go and you set. have comedy reps now and stuff mm-hmm. yeah. yeah how's that process how do you like uh... I You know, it's funny because I think I wanted it to happen for a long time, but it like finally got to a point where I was like, honestly, I feel like this, I was working with a guy who was doing my booking, but he hadn't signed me yet. And so I just kind of started talking to him about like who he liked on the management front and then kind of got manager and agent all at the same time. And so now I'm with him and management group, but I just kind of decided like, I want to focus on this for the next few weeks and like, I'm going to take meetings a few people had offered so i was like i just everyone at once let's do all these meetings in like a two-week period i'll make a decision and then yeah yeah uh with social media would you say that's what really well for the comedy central thing yeah launched your career the thing that really launched my career is just yeah like individual clips like a bunch of clips just starting posting stuff did you film it on your own or the, the yeah. club filming because I perform like the improv and stuff, but they never get you the footage. Yeah, it takes forever. It's call, if you're call. trying to track down footage, it's it's a tough game. I if I know I'm gonna be making enough in a weekend, I'll bring this dude Tim Young, who's a funny comedian and also really good at filming. And like my best looking clips, a lot of time are him. But if I'm not making that much money on a weekend, I roll up to the club with three cameras, 
lenses and I'm filming everything myself and like editing and cutting really? it together and it's a full time job, dude. And b- between like that and like I do the podcast myself and it's too much. But like, but you really just these days you do have an opportunity to take whatever into your own hands. And so like investing in a good camera and like if I'm doing spots around the city, I'm probably not going to bring it because I'll feel like a loser. But yeah. if I'm doing an hour set, like there will oh. be three cameras on it. Oh, but you if know. you're doing like 10 minutes. like you know. and, Yeah, unless I think I have something really topical that's like well written and I'm like, this needs to go out this week. Otherwise, you know, yeah. I'll just use spots around the city to try and get the hour better for the road. That's smart. Uh, what was your favorite city you ever performed in? Ooh, um... I mean, there's nothing like home. Like the shows in the Bay Area are so much fun. Um, like the like San Jose crowd. shows, it's yeah, pretty gay, right? What isn't, isn't San Francisco pretty gay? City? It is known for being uh, pretty gay. Yeah, yeah. and and that. So we give out. It's a two popper minimum. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, it's it's really. Fun. I think San Francisco gets a crazy rep for being this like super liberal. You can't say anything in their city, and shows can be like that. But most of the time, if you're at the comedy club, it's just like a smart with it audience, and they're great. But Sacramento's also great. Love Austin. Whenever I'm here, Austin's really show. great. Yeah. Have you performed at that mothership place yet? I have. It's cool. Yes, that mothership place. Mothership yeah, place? yeah. It's, What's it's the guy? It's Joe, 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 Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the bald Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. What podcast do you listen to? Do you like to listen to besides Smoochie Town? Besides Smoochie Town, which yeah. I wake up to. Fall what were you? What were you expecting coming in here? Obviously, you probably saw. Some well, I listened to it on the way. Yeah, I had to drive up from San Diego this morning, so I listened to. I listened which to several episode? episodes. Uh, DJ Rub. Oh, do you were up, do you dude. Like he was awesome. Rupp's I was like, hilarious. "Who is this guy?" Rob's hilarious. And then right? I listened to the Menory episode because oh. I'm fascinated by Bob. Bob, oh like, my god, he, he is appointment viewing on IG stories for me. If he's doing something His on the internet, story I am watching is it. Wild. And I Usually, don't know what's happening. Everything he posts, that's like close friends stuff. Yeah, like that yeah, and I'm seeing it. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, he. So I listen, I listen to those. And we I'm, did fucking uh, smelling salts for the first time. Yeah, AJ had him on the podcast, and it, it literally paralyzes you if you Ugh. do it too much, which I did. Did, did you? What, yeah. It's supposed to just wake you up, right? Yeah, this one woke everything in my body up. Oh god, and stopped it from working. For oh my, did you just like, break up real I'll quick? Break, I'll show you the oh. video after. It's insane. Yeah. No, I didn't get a boner, unfortunately. That'd be wild. Uh, but that no, Menery's wild. Good friend of mine. Absolutely how how wild. long have you known him? Four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's been on a journey. Been on a journey. He's getting it back. He's like it's, full it's circle. It, it, yeah, I'm just I'm just watching. I'm I'm down for whatever's happening. Yeah. I'm like, that is fascinating. Yeah, he showed me his analytics and they're fucking nuts. I bet. I mean, why? <laughs> that's you a post so much on a story that, like, how are you living life? Right. I don't know. He just will, like, film people while he's out. Yeah, it's while crazy. he's talking to them. It's like, I'm like, how do you, like, I get nervous, I, like. I get punched. I, like, I think I would get punched. Like, he did to a uh, homeboy that played Mark Zuckerberg at South by Southwest. Oh, yeah. He posted on his, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Like, he, he was Jesse Eisenberg sitting down what, writing autographs, and Bob Menner was like, all right, my man, isn't that? And I don't think Jesse knows of Bob Menner. Right. right? So he so was just like, what is this guy yeah, doing? What is happening? The yeah. The Devil Convention in Boston, I thought it was like one of the funniest what? things. The what Devil Convention is he, great. He had, he just randomly, there was a Devil Convention in Boston. This is like probably a year ago at this point. And he's just going. He's like, you're Satanist? Yeah. yeah. He's no like, way. what the fuck? He's like, not for me, buddy. Not for no me. Oh, way. my God. And he's like, are you with the Satanists? And people are like, stop filming me. And it's it's an entertaining. No fun. way. That's funny. How do you know Benny? Uh, uh, Benedict. Social media. Oh, really? Yeah. He, I'd seen some of the, the clips and, and I, we just followed each other and we like exchanged a couple messages. And then uh, I had not met him until that night at Trevor's. Oh, really? And and this is the second time that I met him. Oh, really? But yeah, we just exchanged messages on Instagram. Oh, sick. Sliding in on dudes. Sliding in on dudes. I'm so much better. Even at Trevor's party, like so many hot girls. I got so many numbers from guys. Yeah. I'm better at flirting with men. 100%. Because you don't want it. I don't, don't have to be too desperate. I'm not playing hard to get. No one's playing hard to get. You're not no so excited. Can... You're like, oh my god, that guy's fucking hot. Yeah, you don't want to be like too eager. Sometimes, no. like I do, get eager with like a new friend that's cool. It's like, oh my god, should I text them? Sometimes, yeah, it, it is. It is weird. Like when you're like, 
texting someone I got and you're Lee, like I got Crystal Lee's number and I like sometimes I worried like because he said he was down to come on the pod and I text him and if he doesn't answer in an hour I'm like uh oh <laughs> yeah, he hates it? me yeah, yeah. yeah. you're Are right you're writing, you're writing you're writing drafts and like yeah. editing it in a separate message and you're yeah. like that's the right tone I'm someone my friends read this <laughs> yeah <laughs> I've done that, and it is tough. It's a tough scene just to know that that's the level that you've sunk to, but yeah. it's worse to fire one off and then read it after it's gone and be like, that is fucking, that was not right. And I lost my opportunity <laughs> yeah. to do anything with it. It's this. so much now, though. Like I feel like I, I backlog. I, it's hard for me to stay on top of DMs. Like I'm better well, if, like, if I get home if I get home after a few drinks and I have nothing to do I'm like all right fine I'm gonna respond to some comments. I'm gonna respond I'm gonna get through all these messages but like otherwise I'm like I don't know how to do this yeah but uh, what would you say the number one piece of advice you can give to comedians uh, yeah of, new comedians whatnot even to me I'm not I'm pretty new. totally yeah I think it's it's just it is it's a marathon it's not a sprint and like it's going to be depressing at a lot of times and at a lot of levels and like it even is at mine like I have now achieved stuff that me three years ago would be so jealous of but now because of where I'm trying to go I'm just like no nah. there's so many times you're like nobody likes me I fucking yeah. suck I've almost quit several times you know but yeah you just have to keep going because like the best joke that you're ever going to write should happen tomorrow. Like you're getting better every day. Mm. Uh, the best clip that you post could be tomorrow. Like you just have to focus on what you're actually doing when you get caught up in all the bullshit and the ego of whether or not you're actually getting validated, come back to the actual art of what you're doing and try and do a better job of that. And that will keep you feeling a lot more grounded and a lot less insane. Yeah. Cause you do it. You should be doing it cause you like stand up, not cause you like having followers. Yeah. But eventually you are going to need followers. You are going to be pretty sad. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks how that's like, it's a must, you know? It's tough how it's so analytically driven now. Like, and, mm. and everything is just, you get immediate feedback. And so I think a lot of people don't have time to grow. And like, if, if people are new at comedy, I would say resist the urge to post clips right away and just get good. And like, you'll know when it's time. Well, that's, you probably won't. You'll think it's time way sooner. But I always, I post shit way too early too. I literally only have like a few Sam clips. So I, I perform like weekly at the improv. I host yeah. like Mark's shows and stuff. But like, I never get the footage and I do well. So it's like, I want it. But then again, I don't know if like I should release it. Like Benny doesn't have any clips of him stand up either. Like on yeah. his actual page. If you don't need so to do like, stand up clips, it's a great thing to wait. Cause if you're building your audience anyway, you know, like yeah. wait till you have true heaters. Mm. Cause I, I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't like seen the clips, so I'm not giving specific no, advice, yeah. but like, it's just when I first did stand up, I got off stage and I was like, those seven minutes are hot. I'm seven minutes into my hour. You know what yeah. I mean? And then now, 10 years later, all that stuff, I'm like, I am so glad I never posted that because mm. I'm embarrassed of it now because I'm so much better. And so you just have to give yourself time. And it's so like, if you have one good thing, the rush is to like, let's get it out and move on to the next. But historically, stand up has been an art form that was honed over like a lot of time and hours. And yeah. it wasn't like, I told a joke once, let's clip it and rip it. Mm. Nikki Glazer said a great piece of advice. She was like, I wasn't, you're not good until like 10 years in. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can be good for your level, but like if you post it now, everybody's seeing it and you already have like, like oh, you're not that good. Right. And yeah. then now someone says that to you and you're like, fuck, they're right. And now you're all depressed. And it's like, you're not supposed to be great yet. Yeah. It takes time. It's, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And I think like people who have, you know, cut the line have had a tougher go of it. Because mm. by the they you know maybe can start touring, but the hour isn't that good, and then people come out and they're used to seeing people at another level, and they're like, "Oh, that wasn't as good." And if you're able to like give yourself time, that's why I had a day job until like a few months ago. Yeah, have you? Oh, really? Have you ever? What was your? What were some survival jobs? Not survival jobs, but like what? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did recruiting in tech, so I did like sales recruiting in tech, and then I moved into selling tech, uh, like ad tech. I was a sales rep at a tech company. And then I went from that, I was able to get the job at Chubby's and I did marketing for them for like five years. Oh wow. And, and that uh, was just like, uh, it was fun when I, they shoot? first hired me, it was like, they like Snapchat was big. And so we would post a sketch every day to Snapchat. Okay. And I guess Snapchat's big again. Snapchat's big again. It like Nobody was, and then it like, wasn't. It makes a lot and of money too. Yeah. yeah. So if they'd kept going, it probably would have been just, a great yeah. thing to do. But 
Uh, but yeah, I, it was cool. I did a podcast for them and I'd be like writing monologue jokes and Oh, so basically sketches. everything that you were kind of doing already creatively. Exactly. It was yeah. like the perfect becoming a comedian joke. Now you have to do a bunch of stuff you hate. You know, I didn't love uh, learning the ins and outs of email marketing and yeah. running social media and all that, but it actually helped now because I developed a skill set. Like I learned how to edit. I learned how to Photoshop. I learned how oh, to really? run email campaigns and I have to do all that shit for myself now to sell tickets. So yeah, it was, it was a perfect job. Actually. Damn, the Photoshop and editing. That's why I need to learn how to edit too. The way you learn is by having to do it. You don't sit down and there are like courses you could, who gives a fuck, bro? You have ADD. You, you don't got time to waste. You need to just, <laughs> you need to just get footage and be like, shit, I need to make this a clip. And when you run into an issue, you go to YouTube, it tells you how to fix it. And like, that's how you learn. So just YouTube's the best fucking Yeah, I spend, I spend way too, I spend so much time editing, but like, that's just what it is now. You know? Yeah. What's, uh, do you think like outsourcing the editing? Uh, yeah, I should start doing some of that. But like, since I just stopped having a day job, I'm not making like a crazy amount. So right now Still, I'm just like, yeah, might as well. Yeah. Might as well just do it. And like, there's some stuff that you can't outsource. Like going well, through all the footage, like if I do a weekend, five hours of footage, it sucks going through all of it, but I'm gonna have the best concept of what is actually mm. a good clip. Yeah. And I don't know if I could afford to pay someone to go through five hours of shit and then edit it Fair. together, but I should, you know what? Hey, if you're a great editor and you're cheap, hit me up, because yeah. I am down. Yeah. I outsource some stuff, but I do some stuff too. Speaking of viral skits, you had uh, about joking about running for the mayor of Nashville under the campaign banning woo. Yeah. What's going on there? Uh, if you've been in Nashville? I haven't, unfortunately, but I heard it's great. Oh, well, it's awesome, but it's just a bunch of chicks on, on bachelorette parties going, woo! <laughs> so we've got to ban that. I have done, for a bunch <laughs> of cities, I've done mayor of Boston, Austin, Nashville, San Francisco, San Jose, Sacramento, Scottsdale, and it was my first, like, okay, I'm headlining, I have no idea how to sell tickets try to make a fake mayor ad that'll go viral in oh, market, that's smart as plug fuck. my show at the end. And it is smart, but it's so much work and I'd have to like get there in advance and then get it edited and turned around. And so it's like tough to do, but they're they're fun. You would literally go there first and yeah. like film it while you were in town? Yeah. To get like the popular Either back. that or if I knew I was gonna be there like a few months in advance, you know, however I could do it. So what would be the campaign uh, for Smoochie Town and what would you ban, uh, how would you ban it? Damn. You can do it at camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, I'm Joey Avery and I'm running for the mayor of Smoochie Town with a simple plan. Mandatory poppers. No one's coming in here with a tight asshole because it's a loose butt podcast. And yes, even though he said he didn't, he has definitely shoved a cucumber in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you have my vote. God, you have my I'm vote. in. I'm in. That's fucking hilarious, <laughs> dude. Uh, what would you say your favorite thing about comedy is? And uh, what's your favorite thing about your wife? My favorite thing about comedy, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, because I get so caught up in the like career side of it and all that shit, and did my clip do well. My favorite part of comedy is just getting to do it. Like whenever I'm feeling off emotionally or weird or anxious about stuff, it is getting off of stage after a good set that I'm like, oh shit, I feel like centered. Like I feel like I actually like need it in my life. And yeah. so like I'm funny. I am yeah. right where I'm supposed to be. Exactly. And so like it's just it is a really fun thing to get to do and it's easy to lose sight of that. And I think I lose sight of it too much. So I try to just like be grateful for the fact that I have something I really love doing mm. and um, and and it makes me feel that way. So it's cool. It's a special thing that we get to do, and, and we usually spend time bitching about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, my wife is just the best, dude. She's my person. You know, it's mm. like she's uh, such a better person than me, <laughs> and so it's nice to have that in your is life. She in the business as well? No, and I love that. Maybe that's my favorite yeah. thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't like any of this shit. Like, yeah. doesn't you know enjoy social media, any of that. And I think that you know, and if you do, that's great. But I, yeah. you know, there, this relationship's uh, only big enough for one douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, what's next for uh, Joey Avery? You going on tour? What's um? Yeah, so I'm I'm on tour now. So I have a bunch of shows. JoeyAvery.com slash live has all of those, and then I'm excited about the podcast, the Joey Show, having having people on and trying to do this whole like sketch music video multimedia. Yeah, you feel thing. That, like would you want to be on SNL? Because I feel like that's the vibe of. You know, I would be. I think you'd be good at SNL. 
I, I, I'd, I'd like to think that, and I would definitely be open to it, but I think like the main goal now is like working on your own thing and having that become popular and like something that you control just mm. seems more fun and, and like a pure artistic expression than like the stresses of that place and like yeah. the way stuff gets watered down and how you can never do exactly what you want to do. Like I really just want to be able to do stand up, tour, have a good business of that, do a podcast I enjoy and have people who like that. And I hope it's big enough that I can make good money, but I'm like, I don't need to be like super duper famous or, you know, mm. I don't know. Yeah. Just want to do my stuff and not, and not stuff. be poor about just it. Just want to do poppers <laughs> and do my stuff. Yeah, dude. Just want to pop it up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, happy dad segment before we go. It took way too much of your time. But uh, what's your relationship like with your father? <laughs> He's great. Yeah, my dad. My dad's great. That's so funny. Um, man, I bet you get a variety of answers on that. Uh, I had a couple deaths in the family. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So that, quick segments. <laughs> Not yet. Hey, old man, keep kicking. Uh, yeah, speaking of happy dads, he likes to drink. Um, yeah. no, he's great. <laughs> I've had a lot of very alcoholic fathers, too. Yeah, He no, he, he's... I he, think it's because comedians have, like, uh, bad, like, trauma. Yeah, and I don't. Like, yeah. people were always like, why, why do you do this? What's, like, your issue? Who What's your you? trauma? I'm like, I think if you're an intelligent enough person and you think about the fact that you and everyone you love is going to fucking die, that's kind of traumatic. And yeah. so comedy can come from that. No one had to touch me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Does anyone ever touch uh, Besides Cape Town? Only, can, only, can, only, it was all, it's all been above board. Oh, consensual. I'm pleased with all my, you know, yeah. I got offered 10 grand to get my dick sucked once. Here. You really? Got, in LA, when you were living here, I'm probably, you probably got some weird fucking DMs or uh, I do, I still get weird DMs. Like, there's a guy who like, every time, like, Every like fourth thing I post, he'll just DM me and be like, I need you to come inside of me. And I'm like, well, that is, that is a lot, you know? And so I don't, I don't, I don't open, inside him I don't open party? those, but I always check. I'm always like, what are we up to today? You know, Johnny. And be like, I need you in me. And I'm like, well, that is flattering, but I will decline. Yeah. You yeah. are cute. You are I, cute. I appreciate that. Yeah. I remember when I was in Cape Town, I had a radio show and there was a guy who worked at the radio station and he would be like, come on, just let me sign your dick and he'd be like it's so much better when it comes from a guy and i was like i'm not doubting that that's true but i won't like it i won't like it yeah it would be usually weird. it's a mutually beneficial experience right usually i uh, you know getting your dick sucked is not just the, the fact that that's happening it's that oh, this lovely lady's doing it what a nice gift yeah if someone would never find out and <laughs> He was cute, and like you knew for a fact, no one would ever find out what's your price, how much. Oh, price? Yeah. To let a dude suck my dick? No, to suck a cock. And to you don't suck have to. A cock. You don't have to swallow. No one would ever know. The guy's cute. Okay, um, that's good. And it tastes good. How cute? Are we talking like Thai lady boy cute, or are we talking like guy still? No, it's not. It's a, not like mostly. Like I can't. I, there's no tranny. titties that I can play with. No, he, you didn't find him on OnlyTrans. You can't find it on. Is that a website? Well, no. That's oh. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go to only trains for my yeah only trains nephew. for my nephew yeah. <laughs> not supposed to run a train on your nephew but yeah. uh, okay okay so it's a dude and he's attractive and I have to blow him for five minutes you don't have to swallow for and you five minutes well if we're doing it you might as well <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna not do it. I mean, if I'm gonna get paid NBA money, which I, I, a million dollars, I think I would do. It. I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I would. That that cash, changes the trajectory of my life. And cash in front of you. Yeah, I would be. I I wouldn't enjoy that, but for a million, dude, a million dollars. I think I'd be good at it too. So fucking like four and a half minutes. You invest that a million for four and a half. Yeah. I'd you practice just get first. Into it? I'd practice first on something, yeah. and then I would like so it'd be quicker experience. It'd be pretty degrading to know that you didn't want to do that, and you just did it for a million dollars, and then that you know, th just imagine the guy just sitting there like, <laughs> "Good work." You know, you're like, "Oh, he God. loses memory of it too." Oh, he loses his memory. No of one it? ever knows of it besides you. I would, I would tell so many of my friends. I'd be like, <laughs> you are Why never going to believe how I got this, this million dollars. I had to blow it, dude, and it sucked. But I do have a million dollars. And know? honestly, if there's another guy offering, I'll take two. I'll do it again. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, if this was, I would do it weekly. I mean, mine's <laughs> talking fifty-two mil a year to just be a traveling cocksucker. <laughs> 
I would do a hundred grand. A hundred grand? Cash in front of you? Damn, this pod must not be doing so hot. <laughs> Fuck. Where can we find you on socials? Uh, at Joey Avery on Instagram, Joey Avery Comedy on TikTok, and then the podcast and stand-up clips are over. If you just search Joey Avery on YouTube, easy to find. Fuck yeah. Thank you for coming on, dude. I want to thank Happy Dad, Purple Banter. Uh, Joey Avery, what a guest. What a guest. This was a pleasure. We're going to go do some poppers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>